Hi, I'm Dinesh Verma. I work at the IBM Thomas J. Watson Research Center. My area of exploration is distributed AI and AI at the edge, which effectively is something triggered primarily by the advent of 5G networks. If you look at 5G networks, what they promise they offer, you can see the changes they are making into three different categories. The first category is offer higher speed on the air. The second category is that implementation of the 5G systems has been designed to be done as software defined functions as network using NFV techniques as opposed to being a hardware gear. And the third big thing in the 5G networks is effectively the support for edge computing. Now, among these three features, if you see which of the three is truly transformative, the increase in speed, while wonderful, and we all want to have higher speed and better connectivity, the increase in connectivity doesn't truly create any new fundamental capabilities or applications or solve a problem that we don't already have solved in the system itself. The reason being that we already have through Wi-Fi or through wired system, a huge amount of connectivity, which is even faster than the speeds 5G would offer. Now 5G would indeed offer it on a mobile en environment. We can have that connectivity when we are in the, uh, you know, on the road. But again, I would say that it's hard to imagine something which is fundamentally different, even though the speeds are much better. The second capability, the fact that networking function will be implemented in software instead of hardware is disruptive and transformative for certain sectors of the business. Definitely people who provide network equipment and who uh, offer that will see a big disruption as the business shifts from hardware to software. But from the point of people who consume 5G connectivity, it's essentially orthogonal to us as an end consumer, whether our connectivity is delivered via an end-to-end -end implementation, which is primarily software, primarily hardware, or a mixture of the two. On the other hand, the third unique feature, which is offered edge computing can have very, very transformative impacts because effectively what edge computing offers is to the end users of the 5G network, a capability of having systems that would be running locally or at very close edges without going through the hassle of how do you direct things there without going through the issue of how you would uh, get connectivity there. So if I am a manufacturing plant, I am concerned about my data. I won't need to connect my data. I need to keep it locally. I have got warehouses and buildings which require to span the network connectivity, a layout of multiple Wi-Fi devices right now. If instead of doing all that multiple Wi-Fi device network, I can just have one 5G sub six or uh, sub band uh, environment, which could effectively connect all of my infrastructure and land me connectivity to an edge server which is local, where my data will be preserved, where my information will be kept private. That is of tremendous value to me because I can run AI workloads. I can do data analytics. I could do mining, anonymization, encryption, all of my manufacturing data at the local site. Similarly, if I am running an automotive fleet and I have to run them or direct it to my uh, local car dealership, which is in the area so that they can keep track of my fleet of cars or manage their support, 5G offers a nice way so that I can get them to a local area and manage my automotive fleets in a very nice way. So the true transformation from 5G that will happen will arise because of edge computing. And there are a whole bunch of applications of edge computing, which makes sense in the context of the enterprise workloads and enterprise connectivity, which is where I would envision a big transformation and big change coming through. Now, um, in the consumer space, edge computing may not deliver that much of significant value. True, there would be a benefit in getting some of the edge functions, being able to play games from a local service or get a lower latency, but it may or may not make a big difference unless some popular killer game comes up, which I personally would say that we as a, uh, I as a research have very hard time envisioning that, uh, but I'm sure there are some game makers who may be able to come up with that transformation the true transformation will happen in the enterprise domain with edge applications. Now, if you go beyond 5G to 6G, what would happen in 6G? What would be the uh, like, you know, capabilities that would need it, be needed? 
we have to look at the uh, limitations in the 5G architecture. It 5G architecture, like all other generations, have been specified by standard committee. There are aspects of it which seem to be a little bit problematic as far as scalability and, and, and a rollout are concerned. For example, it was fabulous to have a concept of network slices, but you have to be very careful how network slices have to be implemented. When about 30 years ago, uh, when ATM networks being established, they tried to establish a similar concept of end-to-end -end system and the implementation of that or the scalability of that solution was a challenge, which effectively, uh, I believe, uh, led to ATM being delegated to be just an underlay network for the IP communication. So the network slice concept, again, depending on how you're implementing it into individual network router, may, I would suspect, lead to certain scalability issues. And I would envision in 6G, a new different architecture, a new different approaches for supporting network slices may be available and may come around. Similarly, another limitation that we see of 5G network is that you are getting to millimeter wave speeds, but millimeter wave speeds for 5G, which offers you really truly high throughput, cannot penetrate walls and glasses. In 6G, we are talking about even higher speeds. And when we talk of higher speeds, we would end up into architectures where the device range would be fairly limited. And when you go those device ranges, you have got things in the house and they have to have services and the access point in the house. How do you connect that to the back end? And then you get a mismatch of a very high end, so, uh, uh, like you no know, high speed software on one side of the access router and perhaps a lower band, a lower speed on the other side, which leads to another need and demand for things like increased enhanced edge functions at the device uh, caching and other ways to mitigate the speed mismatch. So I would envision that 6G effectively would drive strongly towards these type of edge capabilities on functions designed to handle the communication mismatch. And we'll see the new fundamental architectures for 6G to have a lot more edge boxes, a lot more edge computing, edge intelligence caching uh, analysis functions, which will be designed to handle the two mismatches. So in summary, you could see that my biased view or my view is that the big transformation that we'll see in 5G and 6G would be around more and more enhanced architectures, streamlined for performance, efficiency, and the broad architectural issues, which will drive the industry, uh, both enterprise and the consumer space towards more and more of edge computing. Thank you.